came out 31, I had a question coming out of section 5.3, number 17. And here we were asked to find the x-intercepts of a polynomial. And I have a cubic polynomial here. And when I say cubic, I mean because the highest degree there is 3. But whenever you want to find an x-intercept, you always have to let y equal 0. And now that we're in fancy math or in college algebra, we'll actually say let f of x equal 0. So I'm basically going to set this function to 0, solve for x, and then see what I get. Now when I look at this function right here, I, I notice that it's got four terms. All right, and uh, not all the time, but enough times when you have four terms, there's something you can do called factoring by grouping. And what that means is um, you typically group two of these terms together and the other two together. And I'm just going to opt for the first two and the second two. And you don't always have to pick the first two and the second two. It really just matters which two pair up the correct way. And for this particular problem, pairing up the first two and the second two, uh, is the way to go. Now, actually, before I move on, let me just explain that if I wanted to try it, I could have tried pairing up the second and fourth term and then the first and third term, which actually that might have worked also, just knowing how this plays out. So I don't want you to think you always have to pick the first two and the last two, but usually that's where I start if I'm going to factor by grouping. And so what that means is I'm going to just pretend that these two terms are together, all right? And that means if I wanted to, their GCF, I could factor out an x squared. That is the GCF, and that would leave me with 2x minus 1. And if you wanted to check it, you could redistribute and see that x squared times 2x, sure enough, is 2x cubed, and x squared times negative 1 is negative x squared. Now, th these next two terms, you could factor out just the 2x, but I'm going to opt to take the negative, oh, sorry, not the 2x, my bad. You could just take the 4 out, but I'm going to take the negative 4 out, and the reason why is, you see, when I take out this negative 4, this back factor here is negative, oh gosh, I can't use my words, is 2x minus 1. And again, if I redistributed, you would see negative 4 times 2x, sure enough, is negative 8x, and negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. Now, I'm going to erase some of the markings I have here, just because it's kind of junked up, and I don't want it to be too junked up as we move forward. Now, what's happening here, even though it looks a little weird, all right, let me color code this and show you if I had something like a times c minus b times c you would tell me hey you know what I could factor out the c from both of these and be left with a minus b and that's really what I'm about to do here so I have a times c minus b times c so I'm going to factor out what is common to these two terms, all right? So let me reemphasize here. Now we have two terms rather than four, and they have their own GCF of 2x minus 1. So I'm going to factor that out, and I'm literally left with x squared minus 4, and that's my other factor. And now x squared minus 4, it's quadratic, so I can break it into x minus 2x plus 2 because it's a difference of squares. And then it's a matter of using the zero product property. Right, either 2x minus 1 is 0, x minus 2 is 0, or x plus 2 is 0. And here are my 3x coordinates. But again, if we're talking about x intercepts, they need to be written up as ordered pairs. And that's why you see those three ordered pairs there. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.